think of the evolution versus creation debate, our minds often wander back to ancient days. For the evolutionists, comforting thoughts must be of slime, bacteria, and amoeba. But for the creationist, those same thoughts are of a loving and intelligent creator. But what many people do not realize today is that the debate is taking on new proportions. Today, particularly among pseudoscientists who are attempting to legitimize their religious beliefs, the debate is not about the origin of the species, but of the next step of evolution. This is an interesting point, because if one holds to the theory of evolution, then it must be an ongoing process. Yet we see no evidence of that today in the world. To answer this question, many evolutionists are supporting a theory called the quantum leap. Quite simply, the theory holds that evolution does not occur gradually over time, but in sudden fits of crisis and change. They say this is why they can find no fossil evidence of the so-called missing links. There were none. What many New Agers claim today is that we're on the verge of another quantum leap, except that this time we're not going to evolve physically, but spiritually. I think that man is evolving into a state of higher awareness, higher consciousness, higher vibration. And I think that the best representation that we have of man's movement in that direction is what's going on in the consciousness movement, New Age movement. According to New Ages, the next phase of mankind's evolution is elevation to godhood. They see the human race as a transitional form between apes and God. That's, I think, our purpose on Earth. And I think we're understanding that. Is to make ourselves whole, to become one with ourselves, and then to realize our Godhood. I believe that everyone has Christ consciousness within themselves, and all they need to do is go inside and realize that, and bring it forward, and be that Christ consciousness. Just when and how will this quantum leap take place? To understand that, we have to take a look at the basis of this New Age worldview. We are dealing here with just pure, old-fashioned Hinduism, dressed up in Western terminology and Western gear to make it palatable to the Western mind. And they can't reach the Western mind by giving them the religion of India. The basic teaching of Hinduism is simply the fact that all is one and all is God. This means that according to the Hindu gospel, I am God, you are God, and this couch I'm sitting on is God. Really then, God is nothing more than the sum of everything. And the mind or will of God is simply the sum of all our minds and wills. On December 31st of 1986, a unique event took place. An event that continues to grow in size every year. It was called the World Healing Day, or the World Instant of Cooperation. Millions of people from all over the world gathered at hundreds of different sites to meditate on thoughts of world peace. However, this was far more than a symbolic event. According to organizers, the hope was to mobilize a critical mass of collective consciousness. In fact, according to the man who dreamed up the world instant of cooperation, John Randolph Price, it has been revealed to him by his spirit guide that when 10% of the Earth's population thinks thoughts of peace at the same time, the mind of God will be impacted to such a degree that a revelation will spread to the mind of all humanity. A revelation that we are all gods. In fact, according to Price, in that day, humanity will understand the nature of Antichrist, anyone who accepts the divinity of man. Well, in the midst of all this conversation about the universal consciousness and all those kinds of things, we've been talking about the importance of science. And strangely enough, this whole idea of a universal consciousness is based on, on what many are calling a scientific study. And this scientific study is about a bunch of monkeys living on an island somewhere out in the Pacific. And the funny thing about this island is, is it's divided in half. There's a, a ridge of mountains that goes right down the middle of the island. And so there's two populations of monkeys, each living on a different side of the island. No ability to contact each other at all. Because of this mountain range, they can't get over it. So what happens is some scientists are working there and doing some studies on the island. And they, they're eating sweet potatoes. 
And they throw them out on the beach when they're done with them. And the monkeys come up and say, oh, look, something new to eat. We haven't seen these before. And a monkey runs up and he picks up the sweet potato and he goes to take a bite and it's all covered in sand. <laughs> he just gets a mouthful of sand. And so the monkey doesn't really care for that and he throws it down. Another monkey comes up and does the same thing. And this is going on for a while. Suddenly one of the monkeys happens by accident, I guess, to be near the edge of the ocean and he drops potato in the water and he picks it up and now he eats it and oh boy it's nice the sand is gone it tastes nice and salty and he thinks this is really great so other monkeys see what he's doing and they think wow this looks like a great idea and they join in and they all start doing it too and a whole bunch of them start dipping it and now they're all down there having a sweet potato fest at the seashore but what happens is when a specific monkey comes up the 100th monkey is what they refer to it as uh, in this theory which is metaphorical of that's course that's right who knows how many it was the whole but this is metaphorical <laughs> <laughs> this 100th monkey comes up and he dips his sweet potato into the water and starts eating it suddenly now they have enough monkeys that the whole idea of washing your sweet potatoes is transferred to the universal monkey consciousness and the monkeys on the other side of the island with no contact with these guys at all are suddenly washing their food in the ocean and that is what's called the hundredth monkey theory and scientists or new agers are using this belief now to espouse the idea of us having a universal consciousness. I was at a conference where I heard the governor of a state tell this story as scientific fact despite the fact that if you do your homework you cannot find any evidence of this uh, story whatsoever but it's being purported to be this great scientific breakthrough that there is this idea that if a certain number of any species gets the same thought in their mind, that thought will be transferred to all of that species. And that's what they were saying about the monkeys. And that's what the basis was of something you heard of a few years ago called harmonic convergence. That people thought if they could gather at all these specific places on the earth and think thoughts of peace, the thought of peace would be transferred to all of mankind. Now, of course, it's ridiculous. Um, it's never going to happen. But the fact of the matter is, it is these kind of beliefs that set the stage for some kind of ultimate deception in the days ahead. Because if you're living in a world where things are taking place supernaturally, people may believe that they're creating those things with their mind. Well, in the midst of all this fun and silliness, there is a very serious underbelly. Let's go back to Sue for a look at the much darker side of the New Age. Uh -huh.